Did you see the Jim Carrey documentary? Which one? I saw one where he um, did the man on the moon. Are you talking about that one? Yeah, and he ta- I'm pretty sure he talks about his dad. I think his dad was He did accountant. talk about his dad, yeah. I remember his dad, so his dad gave up his dreams to be a comedian in the Jim Carrey documentary. And he did the nine to five, and then the nine to five that was the steady job laid him off. So he realized at that point that there was no safe bet. And that is true, man. It's completely true. I see that all the time with people that they really hold on to their nine to five job, but nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed. So it's like, you got to take chances. You got to, you know, that, but that's life. People, you know, you got to make mistakes too. And that's why a lot of people, I know so many filmmakers that aren't willing to do their first feature because they're too scared to make a mistake. You know, it's like, no, you got to make it. And if you fail, you fail. Or if you make a movie that's not the best you can do, great. Learn from it and make another film. But I know more than one director that is phenomenal that has never done a feature, you know, and I've known them for 10 years, you know. You think it's the money aspect? I could see why that would be scary, but what, what do you think it is? I think people have all kinds of excuses, you know. I mean, I think money is kind of usually the number one excuse. I don't have enough money or I can't get enough money to make the, the feature. But, I mean, what are you doing to try to get the money? You know, there's that aspect. A lot of them go, I don't have the right script and I'm not a script writer, you know. Um, a, a lot of that kind of stuff. And that's one of the reasons why he got wasted. It was like Seth, my writing partner, Seth Himes, basically, he wrote a script and he came to me and I didn't really particularly like it. I liked the first 20 pages and I was like, the first 20 pages was slightly similar to Wally Got Wasted. And um, I was like, I, th- I really thought the movie was gonna go in this direction because in the first three pages, it's about three guys that accidentally kill somebody. And then the movie went a totally different direction. And I was like, I really thought you were gonna kind of reamp Weekend at Bernie's and put Hangover together and kind of do this like new kind of comedy movie because that's, what we ended up doing. And he was like, no. And after he was heartbroken for a while, because I, I told him my honest opinion, he came back and was like, well, let's write the, the idea that you have. Um, and so that was like 2014. And so we were living together at the time, we were roommates, and I laid out the whole movie in one night with him. Um, and I came up with the structure of it. And then he didn't, we didn't end up writing it. He ended up moving out later. And then like six months later, he came back and he wrote a first draft in like a day or two because he's a very fast writer. And there was like one scene in the first draft, which was the drive through scene in the movie that was phenomenal. And which was great because I could literally, he did my outline though. So it had the correct outline, but it just wasn't as good as it needed to be yet. But it was nice because I always try to stick on the positive because any artist is very sensitive usually. And so I was like, listen, this is phenomenal, but the drive through scene is amazing. And the whole movie needs to be as good as the drive through scene. So we need to do rewrites. So then we, did, then we ended up doing rewrites for about eight or nine months uh, to a year on the script and, um, and getting it to where we thought it was strong. And then we ended up trying to get you know, I had enough connections in Hollywood that I was trying to send it to anybody that could help me make it at the time, which is where mostly every filmmaker ends up dying because they're trying to hand their project to somebody else to help make it. And that's usually falling on dead ears. So we did that. And there was one studio that was talking about making it and some other stuff. It was just talk. Um, and eventually I said, you know what, we can't keep doing this. Like, I, I, let's just do it ourselves, you know. Um, so we ended up raising the money ourselves, selling units to the movie uh, for a certain dollar amount. You owned a percentage of the movie. And uh, I was going to sell units to anybody I could sell units to. I sold them to doctors. I sold them to dentists. I sold them to somebody in France. I sold them to somebody in Mississippi. I sold them anywhere I could sell them uh, and talk to people. And you know, talking to people and convincing them to hand you a check is never easy. But I always tell people I'm one of the luckiest people you ever meet. And uh, people seem to like me and trust me, so I'm, I'm lucky in that aspect. But I deliver. I've, I delivered the movie like I promised I would. Um, so we raised the money. It took like a year, maybe a year and a half to raise uh, the money. Some, not all the money we wanted to, but... Um, 70 grand? Or? Well, 70 grand, yes. But Seth, my partner, actually was coming up with 40 of that, probably. So we only raised like 30 of it. Um, and unfortunately, Seth was in a bad business deal. And I actually did not know that. So I was like, we have the 70 grand, we can start. So I did all the casting of the movie already. I found all the locations. We found, 
I found 38 locations for free in Los Angeles. It's like unheard of, right? How'd you do that? Um, meeting, uh, well, we have drive throughs we have grocery stores, we have fast food restaurants, we have nightclubs. Um, it took time, you know, and I didn't want to put dates down for the film until I found locations and found all my actors. I did not want to have a date because I was working every day on it anyway. It was, I didn't need a time to like push me. I was working on it every day. So I didn't put a date down for the film yet, but I would, every location we needed, I would go out there and I, if it was a fast food restaurant, I'd walk into every fast food restaurant I could and be like, hey, can we use this space to shoot? You know, I would, can I speak to the manager and talk to them? Chains basically would all turn me down. It's a corporate decision. So I learned very quickly, I need to find mom and pop places mom and pop grocery stores, mom and pop fast food places. Basically, I need to be able to talk to the person that's making the decision and not have a million you know, lines to get to who I need to talk to. And it was just convincing people with passion, really. And uh, it was my first feature. My, my butt was on the line. And um, I think they saw how much excitement I had. And uh, a lot of people just agreed to help me. And, um, and then sometimes it was a connection through somebody else. And, um, you know, like the grocery store was a connection through Seth. It was a friend of his from college who knew somebody who owned a grocery store. And they gave us permission to shoot there. And then we went there on the day and they didn't know who we were. <laughs> you know, somebody <laughs> didn't even tell them. But they saw the camera and the crew and they were excited and they ended up letting us shoot there. I don't even know if we needed permission to shoot there because they didn't know who we were. Oh, my goodness. Um, and we shot the grocery store when it was open. So it was like, my actors were joking, and the, we have a, a 35 minute documentary on YouTube. Actually, people can type in Wally Got Wasted behind the scenes, and it'll pop right up as a 35 minute little documentary about how we made the film. But one of the actors in the documentary is like live theater, you know, because there's homeless people walking by, there's regular people walking by in the middle of the shot when we're shooting, you know. Um, but we made it work, you know. and. Um, yeah, so just convincing uh, every location to let us shoot there. And some of these locations would back out the day before because it would be like, like the fast food restaurant was like, I need to come there tomorrow night. Between, after He said, okay, come after you close. We close at 10. I said, okay. He said, well, how long do you need to be here? He's thinking I need to be there like an hour, you know. No, we need to shoot until the sun comes up. Like... I need as much time as possible. So normally we'll try to shoot 12 hours, but I have the sun. So we'll shoot from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And he's like, oh, I have to stay here till 5 a.m. <laughs> like he immediately was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, listen, you, you can't bail on me. Like if you bail on me, I have nothing. I'm completely screwed. So I would convince him to stay basically. And, and that's, that would happen a lot. So, yeah. Rewind all the way back to Seth uh, getting that money stolen from him. I, that happened, so I thought we were shooting the movie for 70 grand. And, um, and to rewind, Seth, had a business, Seth was gonna put in 40 grand, stole that 40 grand. So he didn't know until the first day of shooting. So basically the whole first day of shooting, you see photos and videos of him and he's, you can see he's like having a nervous breakdown. His like eyes like half open and you know, because he has, still has to tell me that he lost all that money. And so we have our first day of shooting and we finally get back because he moved back into my apartment to shoot the movie. Uh, and he comes into my room after like 14 hours of shooting of the day and he goes, he just completely is like is destroyed and he's like, I lost all the money. We have to shut the movie down. And I was like, Seth, I, I got to tell you, there's nothing in the world that can stop me from shooting this movie at this point. Like, no, we're not going to stop. We used the 30 grand and we'll put the rest on credit cards. Me and you will open credit cards and we're gonna finish the movie. We'll put everything we possibly can on credit cards, but we will not stop the movie. And he, he, he came in my room and was like, we're gonna shut down the movie, I'm gonna move from, away from Los Angeles and I'm done with this dream, I'm never gonna do it again. And I was like, no, you're gonna finish your dream and, and we're gonna drive forward. And I, I wouldn't let him quit. I was like, we, we have to do this. And so that's what we did. We put the rest of the movie on, we put 40 grand or something on credit cards and. 30 grand we used to pay the crew and the people we needed to pay, but, uh, and we finished it. So, yeah.